Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. Here's the shaman that I insulted. I'd only been in his village for a few weeks and I was starting to learn his language. I said, Guru Apa, Nango Dingding Tuturi Ati Aprata Hotu. I thought that I'd complimented his big hat, but in fact, I was talking about his genitals. The whole village laughed. The shaman eventually forgave me, and I learned a new word in an endangered language that was at risk of disappearing. My name is Mark Turin. I'm an anthropologist and I work on language death. About every two weeks, another beautiful and unique language around the world dies when its last speakers pass away. For about a decade now, I've been working in a remote mountain village in Nepal with a community called the Tangmi. I'm amazed by what complex ideas a language like this can contain. <laughs> Tangmi is spoken by fewer than 20,000 people. Because it's never been written down before, and because kids in school are only learning Nepali, the national language, it's disappearing fast. I came to Nepal as an academic linguist to write a grammar of the Tangmi language. In the process of doing it, I realized that it wasn't going to be enough. Because they needed practical tools to help them revitalize and revive their own language. And my book, a thousand pages of linguistics and English, that wasn't going to help. So I put together a Nepali Tangmi English dictionary. It's the first published record of the language. That's now being used in schools, and I think is part of the process that's helping to rebuild a sense of pride in their language and their ancestry. When I came back to England, I realized it was just the beginning. There's so much more to do. About 3,000 languages, half of the world's number of spoken languages, they risk dying, undocumented, just like Tangmi. Every single language is a unique snapshot of a worldview. There's botanical, medical, all kinds of scientific knowledge encoded in languages. Languages are really the vehicles for the transmission of culture. It's the oral histories, the songs, the mythologies and the legends. That's what we risk losing when languages die. I've realised that I don't always have to go to the field. I can also bring people to Cambridge to work with me here, documenting not only their languages but also their cultural traditions. Right now, I'm working with Nima Bhutti. She comes from a remote Himalayan village of just 13 houses. In a community like hers, where social relations are so important, the kinship terms you use, the relationships between uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters, very important. Her kinship system is a view into her world. I'm working with Dr. Amchi Nima. He's a traditional Tibetan doctor from a remote part of the Himalayas. I'm also working with a shaman called Yajo from the Tamu community of Nepal. Yajung's exceptional. He speaks two endangered languages. One is a normal vernacular, he speaks with his children, but the other is a ritual language that he uses to communicate with the ancestors when he goes into trance. He's the last speaker of this ritual language.
No single researcher can do all this work by themselves. There's so much work to do that I've put together a new initiative, the World Oral Literature Project. The project was established in January this year, and I think of no better way to celebrate our first year of operation than this event. And based here in Cambridge, I'm bringing people together, experts from all over the world who work on endangered languages and endangered cultures. We're coming up with the best ways to record and archive cultural knowledge, and we're training local researchers to document their own cultures. This is really a unique archive. It's a snapshot of what it means to be human. This work has to be done now before everything disappears. Lumasha, Mimamo.